So we have to treat these things with humor. But remember, you have living, breathing people behind you who, and in front of you, who are dealing with these same type of issues. And if you can deal with them, your audience can too. When all else fails, I keep this. This is my oops eraser. Welcome to Redefine Yourself During Times of Uncertainty. I am Wendy Blum Weiss and super excited about a special guest that we have today where we're going to be talking about all things in regard to virtual presenting and speaking online. And Barbara Kasser, welcome Barbara, so happy that you're here, is an amazing She's a, a speaker trainer. She's one of the directors for Toastmasters here locally in Florida. And she's got a wealth of information and a lot of experience with online training. So welcome, Barbara. Hi, I'm so happy to be with you today. I'm so happy we can do this virtually, which <laughs> is really what we're talking about today five tips to become a better virtual speaker. And here we are, we can do this from the comfort of our own home. And so many people are flocking into these kinds of platforms and trying to figure out how to do it, how to take their in-person live speaking, coaching, training, teaching, and figure out how to do it virtually and do it well. So we're so excited about having you here with us today. Thank you so much. You know, I coach people on the best way to present online. And of course, we would much rather meet on, in person. We would much rather have the opportunity to shake hands, to hug, to be able to look someone right in the eye. But we don't have that opportunity right now. Yeah. So our next best thing is here on Zoom. And when we started, at least for me, we started in Zoom in March and we said maybe a month. And then it was maybe another month. And now people are starting to say maybe till the end of the year and maybe forever. So learning to become a better speaker online is really, really important. And I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to share with your audience the tips and tricks that I've learned and are sharing with so many of my Toastmaster friends and so many of my clients outside of Toastmasters. I can't wait to hear your your very first tip. I hope, I've, I hope I'm positioned right, that I'm getting it right here. Um, I just really want to learn. I know I'm someone who's really open to really wanting to learn how to do this better. So I'll be taking notes as you're going to be sharing these tips as well. Well, before we even get into tips, it's so funny because what people say to me is, I don't really like speaking online. I would rather speak to a live audience. And I have to remind them that you are speaking to a live audience, that the people that you are speaking to are hopefully very much alive. They're just not right in front of you where you can reach out and hug them but they're alive, they're just in a different space. So I guess maybe this is tip number one. Remember that the people that you are speaking to are living, breathing people. If you can get past that hurdle, I think that that's really important. You can't see them, you can't touch them, but they're alive. Does that make sense? No, interesting. It sure does. And what's so interesting now with sports, that they're playing in empty stadiums. And sometimes you see that they put up like a mock audience right. to pretend. Do you ever recommend anybody does that in the background or pretend like there are people back there visualizing actual live faces? You can visualize anything you want. I have my stuffed animal crew. So yes, I look on my windowsill here. I look at a couple of different stuffed animals, but always don't look up there. Look at your camera, because if you look down here, you're going to see my hair flop or you're going to 
try to look eye into the camera and you might have to position yourself or your camera or your computer so that you are looking at your camera. And you know what? I'm going to rename myself and that's another tip. Look at how you look because my name isn't right here. So look at how you look and I'm going to rename myself here to who I am. And you can do that in Zoom. So know your product. Know your product. So that's so great that you saw that it, it mm -hmm. popped up and you were able and, and also to just be yourself. Be yourself. To be authentic and to talk about what you're what it is you're doing. Be yourself. If you make a mistake, if you flub something, if you need to fix something, your audience is very, very forgiving. Your audience is always forgiving. You want to get the audience on your side. Tip number two, if you can, engage your audience. Ask them questions. We didn't prep that, by the way. <laughs> um, you say, where are you from? Put it in the comments section, put it in chat. And something else that you can do is make them laugh. Bring them closer to you. Now, I like to start my sessions with a little bit of humor. So I say, this session, this session is going to be mask optional. Oops, I got it upside down. <laughs> you see, you don't have to wear a mask if you don't want to, but you can. And that tends to make everybody laugh. It breaks the ice. Engage your audience. And you might also say, how many people here and relate your question to your topic by a nod of the head, by a show of hands, just so that people feel like they're part of something. They're part of a group. They're part of what you're talking about. They're in your inner circle. I love it in Zoom, you can, you can press that that uh, hand up, like, to, you know, the thumbs up and right. you can do emo emojis, I guess. You can. Okay. You can. I tend to go for the real live breathing people, but you can use the emoji if you want to. Just in case you're muted, because sometimes you're muted in, in those groups. Right. That's why I use a this or a, yeah, I go for body language. Tip number three. How many people, when they're doing an online presentation, say, well, it's just online, so I don't need to practice. And then when you get in front of that online audience, what you get is something less than perfect. To me, practice, practice, and then one more practice. Why? Because knowing your material is key. Now, in the scheme of life, it's probably not always going to go just as you planned. Are you going to make some mistakes? Yeah, maybe. And we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. But if you know what you want to say and you have practiced it, and maybe you've even done a demo meeting by yourself with no one in the room in Zoom, you are set to go when you have people in your Zoom room. Practice, practice, practice. The three Ps. <laughs> so practice at least three times. <laughs> I'll take two, but three won't hurt. And you don't have to write everything down word for word because then what are you doing? And you see the top of someone's head. And if they happen to have roots, then you really see it. So you don't want to do that. You might want to have some bullet points written down, but just know where you're going with what the message that you're trying to deliver, what you're trying to say. Okay, check, noted, practice. Practice. Number four, keep going. You've practiced, you're ready. All of a sudden, that deadly nerve gas takes over and you freeze 
for a moment and you look down at your notes and all you see are wavy lines. You can't remember what to say next. Has that ever happened to you? I hate to say it, it's happened to me more than one time. And I have to remind myself, oops, I'm stuck here for a second. But you know what? The audience doesn't know what's coming next. Only I know, unless they're back for another time. Don't tell the audience, oh, I forgot my next line. Oh, I'm stuck. Or the deadly words, I'm sorry. Take a deep breath and keep on going. And even if what you say isn't exactly on message, even if what you say is just a little off for that second, your audience won't catch it. You will remember what comes next because you practiced, 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 and you will be fine. Don't apologize, keep on going, and all will be well. I hear this little voice um, saying, um, you, you can do this, like you, you can do this. <laughs> And you can do this because you are presenting online because you have something important to share. You have something important to tell people. You want to give your message to others. It's so true and people can feel that. They can feel if you're authentically in your heart and then they, I don't know, they, they can feel you and it wouldn't matter if you forgot or went off point for a moment, if they know that you really care about them and you're there to serve, more to serve. Right. Now, tip number, f are we on C? I've, I've forgotten my I think I think we're on five. We're on five, we're on okay. Five. Use your own built-in tools tools that you probably don't even know that you have. First, the tool of vocal variety. Vocal variety. What a great tool. And you know what? We all have it. We all have it. How do you use it? Well, pitch, pace, and pause. Pitch. Sometimes you're going to raise your voice when you have a very important message to make. You're not going to shout because no, that's a little too much, but you're going to speak just a little bit louder. Sometimes when you want to speak a little softer, when you're speaking from the heart, pitch. What about pause. You have something that you want the audience to hear. Something really important. Do you just keep going? No. You wait a second, just a nanosecond, before you say those key words. Always remember, the universe loves you. Just that little tiny second and your audience will lean forward, will take a moment, will stop chewing, will stop sipping and listen to what comes next. And then pace. When we are nervous, sometimes we speak really fast. We don't mean to, it just happens. And other times when we are a little bit unsure, we tend to speak as if someone put a key, wound it up, and then we just keep on going. Too fast or too slow are deadly for online presentations because anything that you do online is probably magnified because there's no other focus in the online Zoom room but you. 
So try not to speak too fast. Try not to speak too slow. But pay attention to your pace and optimally vary it just a little bit. Wendy, what do you think? I think that's so true. It reminds me because I worked in the pharmaceutical industry, I would hear these medical presentations and they could be very like, like speaking like this, boring, Mm -hmm. boring. And if somebody was sharing a story or was dynamic or engaging, it would make all of the difference. That way we, you know what it's like, I think we've all experienced it where we felt like we wanted to take a little snooze Right. <laughs> because if somebody is monotone, they put us to sleep. Or if they're too energetic, it just makes you want to leave the room. <laughs> you know? So these are, are really great ideas. I know people are, are really thinking about how they can fine tune their presentation skills. These are really good ideas. Now, you have one other built in tool. And that is body language, body language. Now, most of the time when you're doing an online presentation, you can stand, but most of us don't stand. So we're seated. So how do we use that body language? Well, you can lean in a little bit. You can lean back a little bit. You can turn just a little bit. You can turn this way. You can turn that way. You can use your hands. What do you think? Hmm. What about facial gestures? Nod your head. Make a face. I don't think that's right. And you can, because you're online, you can exaggerate that. I don't think that's right. Because you want people to remember and then the best one that you have and I hope you use it in the beginning I hope you use it in the end and I hope you use it in the middle is your smile your smile will light up the zoom room it will light up the room of everyone who is in watching you and they will remember your smile. Even if you are speaking about the most deadly boring, and I can't believe that anybody who's watching this would ever be- No, not, nobody here- Never, never. But even if, and I can't imagine what a deadly boring topic would be. Smile, 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 smile often, smile often. And the more you smile, it comes from the heart, the happier you make people, the happier you make yourself too. And you will be a winning presenter and you will get. I love that, you know, Barbara. You are such a hoot. You are, t- <laughs> you are awesome. Thank you so much for those five tips. For everyone that's watching or listening, I'll have all of Barbara's contact information in the description box below. Thank you so much, Barbara, for being here. I invite you to subscribe to our podcast. You guys are awesome and hope to see everybody online. Thank you so much, Barbara. Bye-bye. Bye.